Ryoman Sukuna just keeps winning. The one and only king of curses is on a non-stop streak of W's and that is pretty terrifying despite the main cast's efforts to stop Sukuna's reign of terror. However, now Sukuna may get even stronger. As of chapter 252, Uroume points out that Sukuna has yet to go all out. This by far is one of the most terrifying and gnarly points in this battle versus Sukuna. He has fought Satoru Gojo for 13 plus chapters. Gojo literally nerfed him enough so that everyone else that fights him do not get obliterated instantly. He nerfed his cursed energy, nerfed output, nerfed reverse curse technique healing. Sukuna has been damaged by Gojo's punches, took two hollow purples, eight Kashimo's lightning. He's gotten beat down by two main characters, actively nerfing him more, ripping Sukuna apart. He tanked Jacob's ladder for whatever reason, and finally he got his heart crushed by soul split katana. Even Sukuna found it hard to heal from it since it requires reverse curse technique to heal the soul. And you know what Sukuna said? I've barely broken a sweat. This is actually a nightmare. Kusakabe said this was the best and the worst situation that they've prepared for. They've nerfed Sukuna to the ground, but at the cost of arguably their strongest heavy hitter, Yuta, and their best shot to eradicate Sukuna. Uraume also points out the sorcerer should be ashamed that they cannot present a sorcerer greater than Satoru Gojo. Low key, they're kind of dissing the modern era's sorcerer strength, but it's true. If they can't provide strength greater than Gojo, then they can't kill Sukuna. And now both of the modern era's number one and number two are down for the count. So currently we are left with Ino, Kusakabe, Choso, Yuji, Maki, and Hikari. They really should just call Shinjuku showdown Sukuna victim showdown because Sukuna is about to solo everyone. A lot of fans in the community call out Sukuna for his BS and his plot armor. Some may even call it boring. However, in my opinion, do not listen to those kind of takes because I don't think the series could get more interesting than this. And today I really wanted to talk a bit about Sukuna's strength versus the sorcerers moving forward in the series. Now, ever since Sukuna took on his Heian era form, despite his nerfs, despite his setbacks, he has been dominating. Like I said, it's just been Sukuna versus Sukuna victims. He is the peak of Jujutsu sorcery in the series, and he is the strongest sorcerer of all time. In actuality, he may be the last major antagonist left in the series with Kenjaku gone, so it's expected that it wasn't going to be easy or convenient to take down Sukuna. Everyone who joined the fight are willing to lay down their lives to kill him and they knew that their plans could go wrong taking down sakuna has no straight answer and if you seriously thought that this little onslaught was going to end the series then you're just asking for disappointment Sukuna is just getting started, and I don't feel like Sukuna not going all out is really a bad thing either. In chapter 248, he clearly laid out what his purpose was versus all of them. Sukuna wants to enjoy the battle. He is interested in what the sorcerers can show him from the modern era, and he wants to crush it and kill them all. Yet even when their best plan yet with Yuta's domain forced Sukuna into taking a desperate gamble for his life, he is still stronger than them. Damaged, nerfed, crippled, battered, beaten. This is all nothing that he can't handle. Nerfed as he may be, it's only a matter of time when Sukuna's true strength blooms again. If Megami won't interfere, Sukuna will regain his cursed energy output. His reverse curse technique output will return. And like Yuta said, his domain expansion will also come back. This is the worst outcome possible, but it's also the most interesting. Now, since Sukuna has been holding back, what in particular is he holding back? What does Sukuna use when he gets serious? There's not really a straight answer. However, it's extremely likely that Sukuna will unveil his shrine curse technique. In part, Sukuna's dismantle and cleave are one aspect of his technique. However, there is another side to his power. In Shibuya, Sukuna chanted Huga, which in turn granted Sukuna flames that are best described as hellfire. And he was able to manipulate these flames into an arrow of hellfire. Sukuna also told Jogo that he won't cheat by revealing his own curse technique because of course revealing an ability gives it more effectiveness and power in jujutsu. So this technique itself is a enigma. No one knows where it comes from or what it does or what it can do, 
However, there are some clues as to what it could be like. Sukuna's curse technique name itself is called Mizushi, and this has several meanings. Zushi by itself is literally a miniature box that is a Buddhist shrine. This shrine contains religious relics, sutras, and things of that nature. So in context with Sukuna's shrine, it would likely have access to curse techniques via saying open. Mizushi Dokoro is a place in the emperor's kitchen where food is prepared. This is actually very fitting since Sukuna's greatest pleasure is eating humans. He even mentions how diverse their flavors are, so soon we may see him actually consume someone. So when Sukuna says open, he is accessing something mysterious. I've seen theories that Sukuna uses the cursed realm, that he utilizes the black box part of the brain where cursed techniques are stored, but regardless, this is a power unique to Sukuna, and we will probably see aspects of this ability besides just the use of the flames. Sukuna is really going to show us true jujutsu. And it looks like Maki is next up to fight Sukuna when he unleashes this new power. So it's very interesting how Maki is going to approach this. By now, Sukuna is heavily nerfed and he's damaged, which is weird because now we expect him to get even stronger despite his own circumstances since he has been holding back. Maki herself is a pretty formidable adversary in her own right. Physically, I'd say she's not too far off from Sukuna in this condition right now, and she is one of the very few sorcerers able to perceive and dodge Sukuna's world slash, his strongest attack yet. And her soul split katana is even a effective at damaging Sukuna, plus its damage is much harder to heal from. Nonetheless, Sukuna remarks that he hasn't even broken a sweat. So I hope at the very least that Maki will survive this encounter or that other sorcerers will join in the fight like Yuji. Just the nature of Sukuna holding back over the last months has a lot of folks upset, but it's not like we didn't already know this. Gojo said that Sukuna didn't even go all out in their fight, and even the students knew that Sukuna was holding out on some big move. Sukuna's hand era transformation was only the beginning, and Sukuna is no stranger at all to getting jumped. Even against the strongest forces in the Heian era, he soloed all of them. The strongest sorcerer teams in history wiped out by the true king of curses. So what can this modern era even do? With Yuta down for the count and Gojo gone, I still find it hard to imagine winning with our current cast of characters. Maki just triggered Sukuna's third boss phase, basically, and I pray that she does not die. However, it's likely that she will get overwhelmed and will lose, especially without help. Though, if Maki does stay on her ground, that would seriously be an eye opener to her power. Akari just proclaimed an early victory, even considering he still did not win his own battle versus Uruume. And seriously, if Yuta is gone, Akari needs to wrap it up and help with Sukuna. I don't know what he does besides not die and punch hard, but Gege will have to make it work somehow. All the other sorcerers like Ino, Kusakabe, and Choso also got stronger, and maybe they will not die to Sukuna's regular dismantle slashes. However, in the end, they are all still fodder. Basically, even Kusakabe doesn't imagine many sorcerers like them could even hang around Sukuna and survive. I used to think that the only way for them to take down Sukuna was to nerf him to the ground. But even then, Sukuna is still just stronger than all of their combined efforts. So it's very likely that it's going to come down to Megami's soul for how they can stop Sukuna. Megami is a direct answer for how to end everything, and I feel Megami and Yuji should be the ones to eradicate Sukuna in the end. However, that is only a theory. Until they can figure out how to deal with Sukuna or how to wake Megami up, Sukuna will just keep winning. Gege has made it quite clear that he is a calamity, an unstoppable force of nature. You can't kill him, you can't defeat him, and certainly no one has yet to surpass him, let alone Gojo Sotaru. So please, my brothers and sisters, comment below what you think might happen next. The sorcerers are just about on their fourth plan right now, so let me know where you guys see this series going in the future. However, this has been Enemy Stand User, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.